Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be memory work ideas and at home ideas for CC cycle two and week eight. This week for math, we are skip counting the 14s. And so I have the littles this year. Even when I had the older ones, um, we're getting into double digits here with skip counting. And so I found this, I'm not sure when I started using this, but it's on CC connected. The user is Emily Knight. This was obviously on the older version of CC connected. So I will try to get that added to the new C3 if it's not already there. I'll check and confirm that. Um, but if it is, I will put a link and if not, I will request that it's added. Uh, but basically we just take little figurines of horses. I have a pack of plastic horses uh, that we just use and each of the kids gets a copy of this and we take turns skip counting it. You could just do one copy and skip count it on your board. Even if you wanted to keep it more stick in the sand, you could maybe put like a little figure picture of a horse on your board and just have the 14s out and then let them hold a horse and skip count it on the board. But if you do print this out, what we do is everybody gets a figurine and um, as we are skip counting to the tune of Camp Town Races, which is why we have the theme here of horse races, they just take their figurine horse and they go to each of the numbers and watch it, look at it as we say it in the song. And we do that several times. So that is how we will skip count the 14s this week. Um, I hope that wasn't too jumbled, but just a couple ideas there. For English, we are moving on to the reflexive pronouns. And so we're going to change the tune of the song in the chicken dance a little bit. It kind of goes to a different part of the tune. But before we get into that, we'll definitely talk through what a reflexive pronoun is. And basically, it's a pronoun that is referring back to the person or an object that is being referred to. So the big difference is adding on to last week's objective pronouns, the word self or selves. And so it sounds like this. Reflexive pronouns, myself, yourself, himself, herself, itself, ourselves, yourselves, themselves. And then we move on to interrogative next week. So those are all of their reflexive pronouns. And that's what it sounds like in the song. If you want to hear the whole song, I did post a video just showing how the whole song sounds together. Uh, so you could feel free to absolutely check that out so you can see kind of how it fits in and where you're going uh, next. For history, we are learning about European explorers. So for this, we are going to use hand motions. I'm just using ASL letters and some motions that would go with it. But we're going to do between the late 14 is just instead of a five hand, you take that thumb inside and you wave them towards yourself. So this is 14 between the late 1400s and the mid 1500s. When we say 1500s, we're going to make the 15. So you put that thumb back out and wave to yourself again. So 1400s, mid 1500s, then we're going to make a D. Diaz rounded the Cape of Good Hope. The Cape of Good Hope on the map is at the tip of Africa, the southern tip. So rounded the Cape of Good Hope. And we're going to do that. When we say rounded, we'll do that. You could even add a little more fun and to give kind of a visual reference, you could pretend like you're throwing on your Cape of Good Hope. So Diaz rounded the Cape of Good Hope. Uh, Amerigo Vespucci, we're going to do an A and a V, so A and V, sailed, so we're going to do just like our, we do on the timeline, and we're going to change that V into a boat, okay, a ship, so he sailed to the Americas, okay, so America, this Amerigo Vespucci sailed to the Americas, okay, then we have Balboa, we're going to make a B, Balboa, crossed so we're just going to move it across you can even do it with this hand and move it across whichever hands you're wanting to do so balboa crossed central america so for that we're going to show the sign for america so balboa cross central america to the pacific this a p for pacific if you want to simplify that you could just go balboa cross central america to the pacific and make a p i'm just putting my thumb onto the middle of my middle finger and you face it downwards for P. Okay, then you have Magellan's crew sailed around the globe. So I'm hitting my fist like it's the globe and Magellan's crew sailed around the globe. Okay, and then the last one is Coronado explored the American Southwest. 
this is what we do for explored in the timeline so we're just keeping it consistent with that you could also go like this as exploring or as they do out there you could go like this so coronado explored the american southwest so altogether that's between the late 1400s and the mid 1500s d for diaz rounded the cape of good hope uh, so when we say rounded we'll do that because it's at the tip of africa and then the cape of good hope and then we have amerigo vespucci sailed to the americas then balboa b balboa crossed central central america to the pacific and coronado explored the american southwest and that is all of our motions for history for latin we have the first conjugation endings perfect tense again so we're going to take out our perfect our okays our perfect signs and uh we're going to do the tune e is the it emis is this errant first conjugation perfect tense and that is how we do our latin we're just going to show our perfect sign and then for timeline we have the council of nicaea okay the council of nicaea was where they met about being three and one so we have our hand here and we'll start with three or well, we'll start with three and then we come up we put one finger so it's three and one for council of nicaea then we have augustine of hippo so a and he converted to christianity so we're going to do the sign for change or conversion which is to take two x fingers and move them back and forth like this around like this to symbolize change you could also turn your whole body around showing change jerome completes the vulgate we have a j and then the vulgate is the latin translation of the bible so we do the sign for book so jerome completes the vulgate and then visigoth sack rome we're going to make a v and show that sacking visigoth sack and r for rome Visigoth sac Rome, and then we have the Middle Ages. So for that, we take our hand like this, and we move it around, and we end up right in the middle of the palm of our other hand. So the Middle Ages, and we have circa four, circa four fifty to circa fifteen hundred, just like we're doing in our history motions. Then we have the Council of Chalcedon, and that's where they, it was about uh, the two natures of Jesus Christ. So we're going to do the sign. We're going to do two, and then Jesus Christ. This is always our sign for Jesus Christ. And then the last one is Western Roman Empire falls to barbarian. So we're going to do a W for Western. We're going to move it across. Western Roman Empire falls to barbarians. And uh, that is all of our timeline. For geography, we are learning about the mid-Atlantic world. So we are going to be showing our map. I have a tune for this that includes kind of what the meaning of the Treaty of Tordesilla is because that's kind of an imaginary line, but we do show it on our map this week. And so I'll have our map and I'm going to put it to the tune of Under the Sea because we're talking about the whole Atlantic Ocean here. And so this is how it sounds and what it looks like so we'll do mid-atlantic mid-atlantic canary islands cape of good hope strait of magellan treaty of tordesilla splits the east from the west for spain and portugal this is the mid-atlantic world and that is how the tune sounds and what we'll be doing with our fingers or our markers as we review geography so Again, that's to the tune of Under the Sea, and that's how we'll cover geography. For science, last subject, but not least, it is aquatic biomes. We are doing ponds and lakes. We're just extending it to being a little bit bigger. We have streams and rivers, and then we have wetlands and estuaries, and then the last one is oceans and seas we're getting bigger so oceans and seas and you could sing this to all the fish if you want a tune that sounds like this some aquatic biomes are ponds and lakes streams and rivers wetlands and 
estuaries, oceans, and seas. And that's how we're going to cover our science. I think I showed you two different motions. Um, you could do grass for estuaries, but I an estuary is where the fresh water meets the seawater, the ocean water. And so usually that area kind of looks like a river coming in and then it kind of opens up again to where it meets the ocean. And so that's why I'm kind of doing this open, closed, open motion. And um, just a little explanation on estuaries. So uh, once again, what are some aquatic biomes, ponds and lakes, streams and rivers, wetlands and estuaries, oceans and seas? And that is all of our science and all of our memory work for this week. For Tin Whistle this week, I just wanted to throw out just a, a little tip that there are some great resources on CC Connected that kind of give you scripted talking points, teacher's guides, all that kind of thing. So I will link a few of those to the description of this video so that you can check that out if you're interested in looking into some other options or guides or help for 10 Whistle. Uh, another thing that I did wanna share is that Stephanie Laughlin on YouTube, she has some great videos that explain kind of talking through Tin Whistle if, you, if music theory and this kind of thing is new to you. You definitely want to check out her videos, um, but also the links that I'll put on here below. We every week go through the Tin Whistle song. That's also on CC Connected really quickly. That is, do you know the Tin Whistle, the Tin Whistle, the Tin Whistle? Do you know the Tin Whistle? These are its parts. Barrel, fipple, mouthpiece, finger holes, one, two, three, four, five, six, left hand on top. I don't have my tin whistle in here, but that is how the tune goes. We cover that at the beginning of every class. And then and this week we're covering dynamics. So we'll start out with singing the twinkle, twinkle little star really softly. Then we'll get a little bit louder and then really loud by the end of the song, just to kind of show the concept of what the dynamics means. Um, there are lots of things that you could also print out. We have printouts of all of the terms for the different dynamics. So piano, mezzo piano, forte, fortissimo. We have some of those cut out and um, as we're singing the, the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star really low, we'll be pointing to pianissimo. And then as we get higher, we'll point to the different labels that we have for um, all those different terms for dynamics. And so hopefully that is helpful. Go and check out those links because there are so many great resources on there and I will link all of those things below. Okay, for at home ideas for CC this week, we are getting into space this next portion of our school year. And so the first thing that I wanna share is that Costco sells these Discover Space Kits. Um, they come complete with sticker books, a wall map, a little model of space that you can paint and put together yourself as a family. Just a little mini uh, model. I'm going to try to open this and show you. Ours is not out yet, but we painted it before and oh, it's kind of, I need to put it back together. But this is the little mini version of it and all these stickers little workbooks, fun games that you can play in the workbooks. This is just a great kit. Comes with the model solar system, comes with reference books, sticker books, posters, uh, glow-in-the-dark shapes, all kinds of fun stuff. So we got this at Costco years ago. I've seen it there recently. So that would be a fun thing to get for this part, this next part of the year for science. And another great resource for space as we're getting into this next portion of our our school year is this Usborn book. It is the uh, Look Inside Space. It is phenomenal. This book, let's just walk you through. It is so cool. It has all these different flips and flaps and things that you open as you're reading the book. This week we are doing for science the model or the um, proportional solar system. There's a page in here that completely opens out to show you uh, the solar system and where all the planets are, and then it's got flaps within that page to show you different facts and different bits of information. This book is just so cool. So um, if you can get this from the library, or it might be even worth purchasing just for a home reference, um, again, this is the Usborn 
look inside space. So I definitely recommend that as something to read or look at um, in the coming weeks. And then a couple other read-alouds this week. We have Who Was Ferdinand Magellan? Talking about him in our history statement. So that would be a good one. Another great read-aloud that we just looked at also from the library regarding our aquatic biome and ecosystems and things like that. This is Where in the Wild. This was a great book. Uh, took you through lots of great pictures and little look-throughs that you can see that w which animals share maybe different biomes, more than one biome. Um, great pictures and, and words to kind of walk you through the different biomes. So this is another great resource or read aloud for this time. It doesn't just talk about the aquatic biome, but it covers some of the different ones. And so um, Where in the Wild is a great, another great read, read aloud or story time. You could read Pond Circle by uh, Franco. Okay, so for food ideas this week, since we're studying the different aquatic biomes, it might be fun to try some of the things that we would find in some of these aquatic biomes. And so some ideas would be like seaweed, kelp, uh, shrimp, octopus, crab, just to kind of get some fun things of what we find in the aquatic biomes. So those might be some fun ideas. Maybe some clams, just think seafood and fresh water, salt water, fish, and things like that. And then for some of the different videos and online resources this week, Magic School Bus has four different things that would be related to what we're learning. Um, there's have one that talks about the wetlands and three others that talk about aquatic biomes. And so season four, episode five, that's called Get Swamped. Season one, episode five is Hops Home. Season three, episode eight is Goes Upstream. Again, aquatic biome. And the last one is season four, episode three, and that is goes to Muscle Beach. So there are lots of Magic School Bus videos that you can watch related to the different aquatic biomes and wetlands. Bill Nye also has tons of videos related to wetlands, ocean life, lakes and ponds. Um, those would be some great things to check out. So those are some great online things that you could watch through net Netflix or just online. Um, of course, there are great movies that you could watch if you do a weekly movie. I will uh, put some of those in here. And other than that, I think that is everything for this week. Oh, I was going to tell you, our devotionals. So this week we have an indescribable. You have page 158, 160, and 172. All three of those are related to things that we're learning this week. So definitely recommend those three devotionals as well. Always seems like there's so much and that I might be missing something, but for now that is all. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope that it has been helpful and I look forward to seeing you again for week nine.